Hey guys, this week I'm going to be designing and building the wave base for the shark dresser. A portion of this video is sponsored by Simply Safe. For 20% off your system and a free month of monitoring, go to simplysafe.com slash Sawyer Design. Listen, I hear you. Bigger projects and more on design. This is for you. I have over two terabytes of footage on this build so far and have been working on it on and off for the last three months. It's super complicated with a ton of new techniques and it might be my favorite design to date. So I've been trying to figure out how to share the design process with you and get my brain out of my head and put it on the screen. Now, the question I get most often is how to design furniture. Let me preface this with saying, this is not a how-to, this is how I. I'm hoping my process helps others. Design and inspiration comes from all over the place. The first thing I consider is the existing decor. If everything is mid-century modern, Art Deco may not be the best choice. In this case, there's really no style that we're aiming to match, but the room definitely has some dark vibes, more of a theater than a sunroom, if that makes sense. Now, I thought it might be fun. I thought it might be fun. Let's play a word game. I say a word, you think of the first thing that comes to mind. For example, I say dresser, you might think bedroom. Okay, first word is bedroom. What do you think of? Comfortable, peaceful or calm maybe? Or how about sexy or sultry? Okay, let's try each of those. So for sexy and sultry, what do you think of? Curves, nudity? How about peaceful? Maybe you thought waves or ocean. Comfy and calm sound sort of boring. There is comfy and calm furniture, but it's not really my style. So I'm just gonna nix those off the list right now. Nudity is kind of hard to capture, but I do like the idea of adding curves. So what's left? Dark and sultry waves. Cool, this is sounding fun already. Next, I take into account any techniques that I'd like to apply on this project. I was watching a thing on Ken Block's new electric Audi and the designer was bringing attention to the third dimension of the body panels and design. Key logos like this and to really make sure that we show the 3D of the car and kind of um, color outside of the lines. I really dig that. I've been wanting to do something that has some like cutbacks and dimensionality to the layers of a piece. And I know I'd like to do more veneering and bigger laminations. When I thought of cutbacks and dark sultry waves, I was immediately hit with the image of gills of a shark. Shark? How do I make something look like a shark? Well, that's not really the point. I mean, I guess that probably is an approach that some people take, but I'm more interested in taking the elements from the shark and bringing them in like all together into something that might remind you of a shark. Sharks are kind of scary though. I wouldn't want anything competing for the title of apex predator in my bedroom. That came out weird. You know what I meant. <laughs> is there a shark that's more of a happy shark than a scary shark? Yeah. Exactly, that one, the blue shark. That's exactly the one I was thinking of. And I love the delineation of color between its like dark upper side and the like wider underbelly. Tight, let's take it from there and see if we can get these elements all packed into a dresser. This is gonna be fun. You're gonna see a little bit of the case in this video and don't worry that I haven't shown you that yet. We're gonna cover it in part two. There is enough cool stuff in each half to cover them individually and I wanted to get them out as they were finished. Hope you don't mind. This guy here is my neighbor, Leon. I thought you should meet him. His name's easy to remember because as he introduced himself, it, it rhymes with peon. Whatever you're into, man. Now, I'm sure many of you want to know more about my neighbors, but I'm gonna switch gears and talk about woodworking for a minute, if you don't mind. So what I'm doing here is setting up an MDF form that'll serve as the template to wrap veneers around or thin strips of wood in order to create the curved base the wave base. So this is gonna be the base, uh, the wave base for the shark dresser. And I'm getting good at this naming thing. <laughs> at the risk of going too deep, this might be interesting to some people. So typically how this is constructed, or at least how I was taught and how I typically do it, is to take this curved structure down the side and iterate that across the span of the curve. Well, a few problems with that. A, I just hate working with MDF, it gives me headache. 
There's formaldehyde, it's super dusty. What's left over is this really funky form. It's impossible to utilize after the fact, so this all becomes waste. So by doing it this way and iterating forward to backwards, I'm left with basically a bunch of rectangles and I can totally use these in the future for jigs and stuff, which I think is awesome. It means less cutting down stuff that goes in the trash later and more reusing stuff that I've already cut. It'll be interesting to see if this gives little flat spots since it's underneath. I don't think it's gonna be a huge deal and I don't think it's going to telescope into the laminations above. Too deep, I'm doing that thing. Let's put some glue on some wood and get this thing rolling. So one of the things I really like about curves is the challenge that they pose. And a big component of that challenge is actually trying to grasp it visually in my head. Something about curves in 3D space, while I'm trying to conceptualize those, just don't come out on paper like I see them in my brain. And I really enjoy pushing myself in some different way in some different aspect on every single build. So if I were to lay this out flat and trace the shape of the case, as soon as you put that over the curve of this form, it's no longer the same size. So it's almost uh, extrapolating that curve and stretching it just a little bit. And tracing it really is not a science. So I'm going for close here, not perfect, because I can fare out some of these curves down the line. And fair is fair, as they say. The thing about trying something new every time you do something is that it requires some flexibility and kind of go with the flow attitude. I should probably mention this is my first dresser I've ever made too. I've wanted to build one for a while, but with the amount of time and materials there is in hand cut, dovetails, piston fit drawers, and custom design, it's hard to find somebody who is willing to pay for three months of my time and 200 board feet of walnut. All right, let's get this thing tested in the bag. I'm thinking it's gonna need another skin over the top, the eighth inch. I mean, the way these baffles are constructed, the eighth inch might be all right, but I think two eighths or a quarter will be better, preventing any flat spots from forming on the underside of the curve. So I gotta shuffle everything. Shuffle, the shuffle is a pain in the ass. So I gotta move the dresser back over here, the form out of the way, the laminations onto the things. Anyway, so I've got some urea formaldehyde resin coming. Evidently, it's the most rigid adhesive. It's highly carcinogenic. It sounds just like some really nasty stuff. This is sort of all about saving my total boat high performance, but now that I say it out loud, I should probably just use the total boat and I'll just get some more. <laughs> Safety third. Oh, well, that was the fear. The material on top is flexible enough that it can suck into the hole, but not so flexible that it can hold that form on this steeper part. So it's being bent and sucked in. So it just snapped across the ridges. So lots of ways to go about this. So let's see what works. All right, so I doubled the number of baffles in here. Overnight, I doubled the top skin. So adding two layers is twice as strong as one. But if you glue those together, it's four times as strong. Why that is? Well, let me tell you. Math. I have no idea. I asked Tim. Tim's my in-house pro bono engineer. I keep him on retainer at no cost. It's pretty nice. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Tim. I'm ready to pour a whole bunch of epoxy. I've kind of been killing the morning waiting for FedEx to show up. What is that? Alert at my front door from Simply Safe. Hey, that is this week's sponsor. Check out this footage. So initially I had the outdoor cam set up outside the shop so I could see when people arrived. But then I was like, nobody ever comes to see me. <laughs> so I put it by the front door facing down so I can see when packages come. It's been so handy. I don't have a run into the house and check. Okay, so check this out. This is the live feed from the front door. I've got a cam inside the shop so I can see what I'm doing. If I want to check on a project like, ooh, like how's that glue up doing? Or for security purposes, I guess I can see who has come in and out. I've got glass break sensors all the way around. Is this off? Oh. Yep. I didn't jump. Did you jump? Simply Safe also sent out a smart lock, which I wanted to install. I always forget to lock the door when I go out to the shop. 
The install was super straightforward. Pop off the old lock face on the inside, and there's a bunch of adapters to make it work with whatever lock set that you have. I set it up so there's a five minute delay in the locking mechanism. So at, when I forget to lock it, walk away for five minutes and it automatically locks, which is just great. I remember like some Dateline episode or something when I was younger uh, and watching that and how a burglar can pretty much empty a house in 15 minutes. So it's really nice knowing the smart lock has my back even when I'm being forgetful, uh, which is quite often. So to get 20% off your system and a free month monitoring, go to simplysafe.com slash Sawyer Design to show support for this channel and the message that I'm bringing you. Really thank Simply Safe for bringing this build to all of us. Really appreciate it, Simply Safe. Now let's get back to the wave base. All right, bag time. Let's see what a $500 plastic bag looks like. Well, as the Brits would say, it looks like a rather large condom. Ugh, plastic's so soft though. So unlike the vacuum press, this one has a quick release valve, which I think is really flippin' sweet. I'm kind of excited to see how that all works. Honestly, I might buy more of these for the other nipples that I have. Seriously though, $500. The difference here is this is just a lot more supple material and way less likely to pop when you're bending. So vinyl's really awesome for flat work, but this is the way to go for curved stuff. I didn't know that when I started out, so I have three Vinyl bags, I had never felt this stuff. Then I went over to Tim's shop, my buddy, the engineer, and he had some of these laying around and I was like, oh, that is why. Okay, let's smear some glue around. I think for proper adhesion, I'm gonna wanna scratch sand all of this, at least the MDF. We'll do that real quick. Um, I got urea formaldehyde resin and I I think I'm going to use that mostly because I think these 10 laminations are gonna take something around two and a half gallons. I just don't know if I have enough total boat to last me after that, so. Yeah, it looks like, uh, we'll be fine. Safety so third. Sing platen. So the grooves in the platen spread out the air as the bag fills, so there's no voids, so it doesn't continue filling over time. Let's put this in here. Maybe should have practiced on a banana first. All right, let's go make some cancer. I just tried to cop out on the formaldehyde stuff, but I don't have anything to mix that much epoxy. I don't have anything disposable to spread that much epoxy. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. People have been using this for years. Uh, we'll just use proper safety equipment. It also gives me the excuse to use this cool little roller that I have been wanting to spread glue with. Uh, this stuff's all water soluble. Weird little recipe to mix it up and we'll get it poured. I've got one of those like red spinny things that the mixers, tornado, volcano, some natural thing. I can't find it. Don't tell my wife. KitchenAid to the rescue. All right, hear me out. KitchenAid for the shop someday. Well, now I've made it. Okay, so this has to let it sit for five minutes, mix in some more water, and now that I see how much it shrunk in this pail, definitely could have done this in epoxy. We're here, so we're doing it. Well, um, I am just over halfway done and I'm out of glue, so I need to go make some more. Uh, I don't know why this is so far off. We're working against the clock here. I got 30 minutes of uh, working time and we're there. Be back. Oh. 
hard to convey how stressful that is over a camera. So you'll just have to take my word for it. This is gonna cook overnight. I'm gonna get some veneer rolled out right now to let it relax overnight. And then uh, in the morning, we'll pop this out of the bag, get the veneer panels taped up, trimmed up, get this trimmed up, flushed up, and make it look pretty. Okay? Okay. Let's do that. Uh, yeah, good, thank you. Um, yeah. I slept really well. How did you sleep? Never mind, I don't care. Let's <sighs> get the big old bent surfboard up out the bag and get it veneered. It's gonna be a good day. Let's do it. It's not nearly as fun as it used to be. The instability in running the form this way versus this way that I did not think would telescope through the laminations. Definitely against the light has added just some like waviness. Uh, so I'm just gonna come through here with a flat block, knock down those high spots. We've got a good, nice surface to veneer to. It's actually, I was gonna say it's only on the shallow side, but it's definitely all the way across. So noted, and yeah, it'll just take a little extra work to do this. I don't know that that extra work is less or more than the extra work it would have taken to iterate this curve along the form going this way. Surprisingly, this cleaned up pretty nicely. I don't know that I'd do it again that way, but no harm, no foul. Oh, I wanted to mention that I really enjoyed reading everybody's comment on where they're from and their level of interest in woodworking. Definitely helped with the algorithm. And I had a few people mention that they didn't like the super fast paced editing of the last one. So I thought I'd change it up this video a little bit to see what you guys thought about this sort of hanging out in the shop with me vibe. And hey, if you like this vibe and think I've earned it, I'd love if you hit that subscribe button. This week I thought it might be fun to see what creators you all enjoy watching on YouTube. To. Let me know down in the comments below and I'll do the same. Oh, and I've got some big news coming at the end. All right, now that I got all those whoops smoothed out, I'm gonna clean up this edge just a little bit to give me a clean surface uh, right here on this top layer in order to go ahead and route out and flush trim everything underneath. Cool, let's do it. Okay. some sort of motivation, something to get me amped about this. So let's see what it looks like with the uh, case on it. I stood in the center and it's got some flex because it's on a slick surface. Once we flatten out those bottom parts and put the supports here to spread out the load from directly in the center, I, I think it'll support it just fine. Kind of a tripod-ish. <laughs> That is just the motivation I needed. All right, this could sound weird, so hear me out. Since I can't do continuous grain along the front, I could, it's just a ton more work. It, it's, I wanna try something else. <laughs> because the grain isn't continuous along the front, I'm thinking maybe it might be cool to draw attention to the fact that the grain doesn't follow the curve. In order to do that, I'm going to almost do like a marquetry zigzag pattern along the front edge, which might end up kind of be in a cool detail anyways. Cool, let's try it. All right, so my original plan here was to do a double bent lamination, do a bent lamination over the form, and then take a veneer out of that to wrap around the front edge. But the math doesn't work. It's like trying to make a hypotenuse out of the side of a triangle. So I'm trying to get like a zigzag pattern with the grain, but I think this is gonna end up a butt joint, which is not nearly as fun as a butt joke. Which means it's gonna be like that. And then if I wanna reverse the grain again, what do you think? I think that's gonna look pretty badass, actually. Screw it, don't talk about it, be about it. I just need to pull the trigger on something. I think that'll look cool. Let's try it. Okay, I slept on it and I hate this. It just seems like a lot of joints and just sort of disheveled and I'm not into it, but I got it. I got it. Slopes like this, right? Two birds, one stone. 
going to bring the laminations across at a diagonal, book match them, and then I've got a shorter edge to joint them together. And then I have basic angled edge that waterfalls over and down. That's gonna be tits, let's do it. So if we did this in the other direction, it would sort of negate the curve and cancel it out visually. But by doing it in this direction, I think it actually accentuates it. The only hard part is going to be transferring this thick old veneer, getting it to stay put long enough to trace it out. Yeah, that's tight. Let's try this with a uh, time lapse. Ready? So this is actually the largest panel that I've ever done. Um, I have not done a lot of veneering. I've also never been taught how to veneer, though if you're looking to get into this, I highly recommend Craig Thibodeau's book, The Craft of Veneering. Uh, it's given me just a ton of insight on how to do all of this stuff. I'll have a link down below for those of you who are interested in that. I buy this specialty thickness veneer. It's 16th of an inch thick, and it's really nice because you can sand it afterwards without really a fear of burning through the veneer layer or getting into the layers beneath, but it is super unruly to veneer with. I believe some people will lay up a panel on hardboard just to make it a little more manageable to work with. All right, this has had some time to dry and I'm just gonna come back through with a trim router, flush that up. Uh, that'll give us a good surface to go ahead and laminate the top. I'm gonna do the top first and then worry about the bottom later. It's a little less important because nobody will ever see it. So let's get this thing trimmed up. All right, that's taking way too long. Let's just uh, give it a little yeah, there we go, that's better. Uh, the tricky part here is gonna be balancing that little router on this tiny edge and not getting any tear out along that whole edge because it'll show like very blatantly in the finished product if I do. And I think the best way to approach that since I wanna go along with the grain, so my angle is this way, so it means it's a climb cut, which is a little safer grain wise. It's a lot unsafer operational Lee, operationally, operation wise. It gets kind of steep, so I'm just gonna take it slow and hopefully this goes as planned. around this time we got some high performance total boat two to one with the fast hardener so it should be a rock solid by lunch Gel time on the fast hardener is about 10 minutes this one has been in here for about two hours which is about the tack free time. So let's go ahead and get it out of the bag, get that edge cleaned up and we can do the bottom, the back. I've just been pulling this thing, but I'm kind of curious if polyurethane gives the same satisfying. Let's find out. Hell yeah, that was satisfying.
What I'm really wanting to get to today is the support that will uh, kind of spread the weight out over the length of the curve. I think that's going to be important, especially as the cabinet gets loaded up with clothes and drawers and whatever else goes in there uh, to not really point load that curve and just have it like sag down over time. All right, if you remember back, I had traced out the line at the bottom of the base where I wanted to level out each side to the floor. Well, I didn't really like the line that left behind and what it did to the curve. It just kind of looked like it ate the curve. And I really like this gentle swoop I got going on here with the face veneer. So I've been trying to figure out what I'm gonna do on the underside before I veneer it. And I landed on, believe it or not, Bondo. I'm gonna fill the like step down voids that were left over from the laminations, fill that and then just cover it in veneer and it'll have a super solid corner. Dude, that, oh, that stuff's really nasty. Did you know Bondo was that toxic? Whew. I think it only takes an hour to dry. So I might get this sanded before I get the video out. We'll see. And then to level it out on the other side, I got a new toy. I will link this down in the description. I've wanted one of these for so long, I never really had a use for one, but this is about to come in a real handy. Oh, remind me at the end to show you my other new toy. A couple of updates here, a little treat for those of you who made it to the end. I know a lot of you have been waiting to hear what happened with the blacktail table. The steel post in the center was not strong enough, so I'm having to remake it. But I think during part two, I'm gonna go ahead and give the first table away, uh, just with a smaller laminated top instead of that massive slab that Cam has over blacktail. That will probably be the next video, and then we'll do part two on this guy. It's half. We're going to get the case together with the piston fit drawers, the veneered wave faces of all the cabinets and the doors, um, as well as the supports for the base and finish up that lamination in part two. And that's when we'll see all of this come together. But I appreciate you joining me today. Hey, do me a favor and show some love to our sponsor, Simply Safe. It really means a lot to me that they want to support this channel. And it means a lot to me that you want to show them some love because they're supporting my channel. SimplySafe.com slash Sawyer Design. Appreciate you. Appreciate Simply Safe. And then we'll get into the split top Sawyer, split top Rubo. So many cool things come in. Tell a friend. Make sure you're subscribed. Don't miss out on any of that. But yeah, one of you will be receiving a handmade table with a hand veneered radial match top. It's going to be super sweet. Oh, last, last thing. New toy. Does anyone remember me saying I need a drum sander? I got a drum sander. Shops on veneers, baby. Let's go. All right, we'll see you again in a couple weeks. Until then, enjoy the Blacktail Table video once again and part two, trying to rehab the Blacktail Table. And we'll have part three, I hope final part. This has been so stressful. Just to refresh your memory, that was 20% off at simplysafe.com slash Sawyer Design on your home security system and a free month of monitoring. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace.